So I'm going to make the actual demo a little bit related to your assignment too. Here I've just modeled a very quick sketch of a form for a building. I have an exterior shell, I have some interior volumes, I have a base plan. Um, I have them separated out on different layers. So I'm just going to go in and uh, introduce you to Grasshopper and really talk about Grasshopper as a way not to create you know, crazy parametric form from scratch, but as an analysis tool to help you um, link to different analysis um, solutions, but also to start to bring in forms that you're generating from Rhino. So you don't need to actually use Grasshopper to generate all your form. You can model in Rhino the way that you always do, and then selectively start to pull things in to Grasshopper as a way to analyze and get some kind of quantitative feedback about what you're doing and what your design, how your design is performing, okay? Uh, so really basic Grasshopper, uh, it's a plugin for Rhino that runs on top of Rhino. Uh, to launch it, you just type in Grasshopper. Uh, you get this window and here you see some of your older files, don't worry about that. And you see this basic canvas in the background. And this canvas organizes all the nodes which you use to work with geometry and data in Grasshopper. So Grasshopper fundamentally is kind of a data handling tool where you can uh, contain data in nodes and then you can pass that data to different nodes and those nodes do different things with the data. And in Grasshopper, data can be numbers, text, things like that. It can also be geometry that's uh, similar to the geometry you work with in Rhino. And using Grasshopper, you can reference things from your Rhino model uh, and then you can put objects back into your Rhino model. But fundamentally, things that are within Grasshopper stay in this virtual Grasshopper environment until you physically uh, place or bake them into your Rhino model. So the first thing we can do is just start to place some uh, nodes into our work plane. Grasshopper is organized along a series of workbenches. You can see them up here. There's parameters, math, sets, vectors, curves. These are, each one of these icons is a node that does a specific thing, uh, and they're organized by their function. Uh, by default, you're gonna see, I think, nine of them up to transform. That's what comes with the base installation of Grasshopper. One of the most powerful things about uh, Grasshopper is that you can easily install uh, libraries that give added functionality and added tools that are coded by either by the people that make Rhino or by third parties. And we'll get more into this next week of um, starting to use outside libraries specific to, to do specific things that we want to do in this class, like solar analysis. But by default, you'll get these, and then next week I'll go over how to install other um, libraries. So here I have a bunch of other stuff. Okay, so the basic, to start off, we can just drag one of these nodes onto our workbench. So you can do that by going up into your, into your menu docs here. You can just click on one of these nodes and then drop it into the workbench. So now it lives here, okay? So in the parameters are all your different uh, data objects. In geometry, there's all different kinds of geometry, and this is geometry that's referenced uh, from Rhino. So you can see a lot of the familiar things like points, circles, curves, planes, boxes. These work the same way as any geometry in Rhino. You also see some other kinds of things like vectors, which is how you deal with motion and direction in Grasshopper. Um, and different things like fields and pipelines. And then primitives are the other types of variables or parameters, and these are numbers, text, just different kinds of uh, pure data that you can work with. Okay, so to start off with, um, I will create a geometry node. So the first thing I can do is once I have one of these nodes, you can see by default this node is orange. That means that uh, it's missing an input. So all of these nodes in Grasshopper work uh, as sort of mini programs that take an input, do some kind of processing to that input, and then generate an output. And you can see it graphically here. There's a box, and then there's this uh, handle here. That's the input, and the handle on the right side is the output. And all nodes work exactly the same way. Okay, so the way this works is basically um, I have some data here. I can pass it data and then this does something to it and I can pass that data out. 
Okay, so right now it's orange. Uh, means there's some kind of warning. If you click on this warning balloon, it can tell you what's wrong. So basically saying that this parameter geo failed to collect data. That means that it's an empty container. There's nothing in it. So the first thing I can do is I can reference a piece of geometry from Rhino into this container. So to do that, I can right click on it and go to set one geometry. So this will go back to Rhino. And up here in the command line, you can see that there's um, a Rhino command that executed, which is asking me to reference a piece of geometry from Rhino. So I just click on the surface. And now that surface is in Grasshopper. So it's a reference. You can see it's red because it's overlaying the Grasshopper geometry into your Rhino viewport. So when uh, the geometry isn't selected, it's red. And when you select a node, it turns green to show you what you actually have selected. So now we can go in and we can actually hide all of the Rhino geometry. And you can see the geometry here. So this thing is just a preview of what's going on in the Grasshopper. It doesn't actually exist in Rhino. You can see you can't select it. And if you try to select everything, it says no objects in the models. So like I was saying before, stuff in, in Grasshopper is sort of in this virtual world. It's not physically in the Rhino, but you reference objects from Rhino, and then it displays uh, what's actually a preview of, of the Grasshopper. To actually get the geometry back into Rhino, we can do what's called baking. And baking will take any geometry that's selected and actually uh, put it physically into our Rhino space. Um, so to bake something, we can uh, create a new layer here. We can select the layer. And then you can right click on any node and go to bake. And it brings up this bake menu. And it asks you which layer you want to bake it on. By default, it will have the selected layer uh, selected. But you can select any of the layers from your model. There's some other options, grouping, things like that. And you click yes. And you can see that now that geometry that was in Grasshopper is now in Rhino. So we haven't done anything to it, so it's the same shape, but it's actually coming from Grasshopper. Okay, so a couple of other options in Grasshopper. Um, up here are the preview options. So again, um, what's shown in Rhino with this red and green um, uh, colors is just a preview of everything that you have in this window. Uh, and you can change how that looks. Basically, you can turn the preview off, so if you don't want to see anything that's going on in Grasshopper, you just hit this closed eye. You can preview it as a wireframe. So if we uh, get rid of this, see now I'm just looking at the wireframe of the surface. And finally, you can see the solid surface.